Hi guys and welcome to the video. Now for this video I wanted to take a look at the Spyro the Dragon series of games um, just on the PS1. Uh, the original first three that were issued uh, was well, back in the late 90s, early 2000s. I think the first one was out in 98. Um, it's a great series of games, they're incredibly popular um, and if you can manage to pick them up uh, you can sell them for good money on eBay. And I thought it'd be a nice little concise video. I made one a couple of weeks ago about Crash Bandicoot, very similar video, and that was really popular. I, mean, I enjoyed making it. So I thought I'd follow that up with um, one about the Spyro series. I'll link the Crash one at the end if you if you haven't seen that. Um, so yeah, that's what this video is gonna be. I'm going to screen share. We're gonna go into eBay. I've done a search around and I've found some examples of these games that have sold. To give you an idea of what they're currently worth on eBay. And also, as in that Crash Bandicoot uh, video, whilst I've been doing my research, I've managed to find some cracking listings. Uh, I've found a sealed copy of each of the three different Spyro games issued on PlayStation 1, and one of them went for a crazy amount. It was actually a sealed copy of the black label version of the second Spyro game for PlayStation 1 sealed. Yeah, put your guesses down below and then stick around till the end and I'll screen share that. See if you've got anywhere near what a Spyro 2 sealed went for recently on eBay. So what I'll do then, uh, first we'll take a look at the first one, the original, see what they're going through. Then we'll run through two and three and then we'll take a look at those sealed Spyro games at the end. And yeah, it may surprise you what they went for. So that's the plan. Let me set up screen share and we'll take a look. Right, so let me find the right window. Hold on. No, that's not it. <laughs> I've got so many windows open. Uh, right, you are seeing this. So, as I was saying, this is the first Spyro the Dragon game uh, developed by Insomniac uh, in 98. Hugely popular, sold about 5 million copies worldwide. This was the, as with the Crash game, this was the most successful of the series on PlayStation. Uh, the, the original. Uh, this was a listing I found. This is the real top end of what they seem to be going for, unless they were sealed. And I think this reached 45 because it has the bonus disc. I only found a couple with bonus discs, and they seem to be reaching or achieving more. I like the way this seller's laid it out as well. They've opened the case up so you can see the front and back, you can see the manual, and you can see the disc. It works really, really well. So, yeah. Great idea. Um, another one here without the bonus disc. This was, I think, the most the one that sold for the most unsealed without a bonus disc. Uh, everything I'm going to show you in this video has sold. These aren't just prices people were hoping for. These are all sold listings. Um, so there's one there. As you can see, if we go in, uh, that's the only picture they showed. Um, it hasn't got a bonus disc. And they managed to get 40 for that. So they did really well on that one. Um, that was nearly the average uh, for a black label used uh, complete. Um, yeah, original first one. About 20, about 20 to 25 seemed to be the going rate. Um, as always, there's exceptions to this rule. Some people are getting more, some people are getting less. But on average, I would say for the first game, you're looking around 20 to 25. That's an example of the Platinum one. If you know nothing about games, PlayStation Platinum, it's just a reissued version of the same game, effectively. Um, the collectors tend to prefer the original black labels, but as you can see here, 23 pounds on bids, it's going for about the same price. People are buying these to play a lot of the time, so they're not too worried if it's the Platinum one. Um, and if you've only got the disc, it will still sell. There's a disc only that sold for 15. Also, if you've just got a case, you can sell that uh, or just the manual even. So there you go. So the first one you're looking, let me just come out of screen share. Again, so many windows. Right should be back with, it, back with me so yeah the first one it seems at the moment 20 to 25 is achievable fairly easily 
Um, if you do have a bonus disc, it seems like you can ask for a premium. And if you just got a loose disc, there's still, I found loads of loose discs that had sold both regular version and platinum. So yeah, people, it's a game people want to play. So they're going to buy it if it's a playable disc. You know what I mean? So that's the first one. Then about a year later in 99, they issued the second one, which I found out during my research had a different name in America. Uh, in the UK, um, it's Gateway to Glimmer. Um, and in America, it was called Ripto's Revenge. And so there you go. Quite why they did that is beyond me. So let me screen share and we'll take a look at what the second one tends to go for. Um, okay. Make sure I get the right screen. That doesn't look like the right one. What's going on here? Hold on. Do, do, do. It's that one. Right. So you should be seeing now this. So like I say, about a year later, they released Spyro 2. Let me just enlarge that a bit. It, for the UK, subtitled Gateway to Glimmer. In the US, subtitled, um, what was it called? Ripto's Revenge. Um, not quite as successful as the first one, but still sold really well and is still really sought after. This is a platinum one, uh, and that went for $25.99. Again, I like how they've laid that out. Same style as that other seller where you can see the front and back sleeves. Um, so you can also see if there's any cracks. You can see there's a tiny crack in that corner on the game. Otherwise, pretty good. So that's that. Um, this is a black label one. This was on bids. Uh, went for a bit less, £20 with some shipping on top. Pictures aren't as great with that one. So similar money to the first one, effectively. It, you know, 20 to 25 seemed the kind of going rate. Here's someone. Um, it's got a black label one again, complete. You can see manual there, disc. And they got 25. Um, here's another example of someone who didn't have the box. Uh, they got 15 again. They did have a manual with it. Uh, manual and disc sold for 15 and again disc only this is the platinum disc as you can see when they reissued they tended to just be a black print on a silver disc rather than the full color like that one um, but they still got 14 pounds just for a platinum version disc so pretty much on the second one come out of here again um yeah on the second game about the same sort of values so 20 to 25 you can achieve quite easily uh, the only way you're going to get considerably more is if you've got a sealed one saving those till the end um so let's take a look at the third game again about a year later i think it was 2000 i did it right down yeah in 2000 they released spyro year of the dragon third in the series and then beyond that it went to playstation 2 when playstation 2 had its first um spyro game and then it went on to to go on pretty much every format after that so let's screen share again we'll take a quick look at what the third one tends to go for and then i'll share those sealed ones all right if i can find it this one so you should be seeing this so Spyro 3, subtitled Year of the Dragon, and I believe that was called that in all territories. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. So this one, about the same again. $25.99 they managed to get for a platinum version. Again, nicely laid out this one. You can see everything you need to see. Pretty good condition. Um, there's a black label uh, again on bids, so they may have achieved more on buy it now, but not too bad. They've got 20 with some shipping on top. It's, it's interesting to see the different sort of styles. You can see uh, this guy has got his box of games in the background and he's just popping them on his lap, snapping his pictures. You know, and that, that clearly works for him. Wouldn't be how I would choose to do it, but yeah, he got it sold. Or she, could be she, I don't know. Um, 
and I found this. It still goes to show you you can still get a bargain um, on a sought after popular title. This this finished at eight twenty seven. It does say acceptable, so that let's have a quick look. I didn't notice that before. Let's see. Doesn't even go into any detail though. There's no description of, you know, why is that just acceptable? Yeah. Well, actually, that's a good example of how not to sell a game. It it says acceptable up here, and then it doesn't explain why. Hence, nobody had any sort of uh, faith in what they were going to get, and it didn't go very far. <laughs> anyway, that one ended at 8.27 with only three bids on it. Um, as opposed to this, which is just a disc sold for 11 and again just to show you uh disc on its own platinum version 13.99 and they had two apparently and sold both so yeah but overall if we click back to the beginning 25 there 20 there it's around the same so for pretty much all three let me just come up here again So from my limited research before starting the video, Spyro 1, 2, and 3, UK PAL versions, um, as I was looking up, you're looking on average um, for something that doesn't have a bonus disc or isn't something special, 20 to 25 pounds. Um, people, there were some listings, I don't think I bought any up to share, where they had 1, 2, and 3, and they were going for around the sort of 60 to 70 pound mark. So it works out about the same. The only exceptions to these prices are if you have a sealed one. And it stands to reason how many sealed copies of these games are left in the world? Hardly any. So they command a high price. So let's take a look. Like I say, hopefully you've had a guess what you think this Spyro 2 sold for. Considerably more than the other two. Um, right, let's take a look and find out. See if we can find the right window. Okay, so you should be seeing that. I've just got to find the window so I can, there we go. So this was a copy I found of Spyro 1 sealed. Let me just shrink that down so you can see the title a bit better. So brand new and sealed. Um, if we go into it, as I said in the Spyro video, down there where it's got the platinum playstation strip you can see that it's got a little rip strip on it and it's got playstation written across so it's got the original sony seal it's not a reseal and looking at the box sometimes the boxes get cracked even though they're sealed but that looks in fantastic condition so this was put on bids and it sold for as you can see there 99 pounds so a fraction under 100 with a little bit of shipping on top uh, and that's the Platinum Edition. So I dare say if it was Black Label, you would see uh, considerably higher. And, you know, if it was just put on buy it now and waited, you could have got, I don't know how much more. But it's still quite impressive for a game that was 1999 new back in around sort of late 90s, early 2000s. So now if I click onto the second one, Actually, we'll leave the second one to last. Let me click here. So this is uh, Spyro 3, Year of the Dragon. And again, sealed one. And it sold for pretty much exactly the same money, £100 with a little bit of shipping. And again, if we click on here, you can see running across near the bottom is the Sony PlayStation seal strip there. So you know it's not a reseal. Why can't I? Click through. Is there only one picture? No, oh, no, there you go. Yeah, fantastic condition. So, and that's the black label. So I'm surprised that didn't go for more. Perhaps there's more demand for the first one. But then it's on auction. So, you know, it's always a bit of a lottery and you never know quite what you're going to get on auction. And then this. So let me know if you got close to this with your guesses. This was a Spyro 2 Gateway to Glimmer. It's actually the same seller who had this one because it's on the same windowsill. Look at that first picture. Well, if you need to look at the name, Saz, Saz M or whatever it is. There you go. 
but three hundred and thirty-five pounds on bids. This is the crazy thing about auction because you never know who you're going to get interested. Forty-one bids. I mean, that's a black label, but opposed to the other one he had, only got five bids at ninety-nine. Who knows? On another day, that might have gone into the multiple hundreds. But wow, three hundred and thirty-five for black label Spyro two. Crazy. Again, you can see the Sony strip there. Oh, sorry, I'm getting eBay messages coming in. So there you go. Let me, like I say, let me know in the comments below um, if your guess was anywhere near that. I, I would never have guessed 300 plus. That's just amazing. So there you go. I hope that was useful and informative. I think it'll be interesting if I revisit these um, these games in a year or a couple of years' time and we can compare prices and see if things are going up or down. I would imagine they're only ever going to go up because as the collectors buy up this stuff and they get put into collections, they're just not coming back on the market. So I can only see that prices over time are going to go up. But who knows? Right, I'm going to try and do the thing where I share a couple of videos. So. Um, if I've done it right, there should be the link to the Crash Bandicoot video where I did exactly the same thing and took a look at some completeds. And I actually found somebody who was selling off a, a complete set of sealed ones and it went for crazy money. So if you want to view that, if you haven't already, that will be here. And there will be another video here. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. I'll try and do some more of these in the future. Uh, if you enjoyed it, yeah, just give it a thumbs up. Drop me a comment below. And I'll speak to you guys soon. Bye for now.